Now we'll continue with a short video on uh, two easy consequences of the projection formula. And we're going to do the Euclidean case, uh, mainly, mainly as a warm-up for the Minkowski case. Um, but it's good stuff in its own right, and it's um, good Euclidean geometry done basically with the algebra of the dot product. So um, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is a huge, huge inequality that shows up all over um, geometry and analysis and uh, even statistics, things like that. And it says that if you take two vectors and you look at the size of this, it's supposed to incorporate information about the size of V, the size of W, and the relative direction. And um, the question is, if you have a fixed size for the vector V and a six fixed size for the vector W, how big can this get? Well, size of a number, that's just absolute value. And the theorem, Cauchy-Schwartz says that this is less than or equal to just the product of the two magnitudes. Okay, And one consequence of that in the Euclidean case, where this is true, is that if you take the, the, uh, the scalar product and divide by the product of the magnitudes, that's between minus 1 and 1. So a corollary, before we prove that, is that this quantity, which you've seen before, at least briefly, is between minus 1 and 1. So in other words, it could be equal. It could be e equal to the cosine or sine of something. And in fact, there's really good reasons why it's cosine of the angle between them. Okay. But, and what we're going to see in Minkowski geometry is that utterly fails in Minkowski geometry. But there's a very, very cool replacement. Okay. So that's kind of an aside at this point about the connection with angles. But it's really an important consequence. Um, now, the other thing is that the equals happens only if V and W are collinear. So that's what, the Cauchy-Schwarz not only says this inequality with the, with the equals, it says when the equals is going to be true. So the proof of this is really easy using projections. Um, and it's funny, because a lot of places you see proofs of this that don't use projections. And it took me a long time to figure out that that was really the right proof. Um, so let's just look at this. Um, we actually know from the projections, remember we had a corollary of that, that the magnitude of the scalar product of two vectors, I'm going to keep using the scalar product notation, by the way, even though dot product notation might be more appropriate because we're really only in the Euclidean case here. We're going to use that in just a minute. Um, that's equal to the magnitude of the projected vector, that's why I have the picture here, times w. That looks awfully like what we're trying to prove. So all we need to know, we just need that the magnitude of P is less than or equal to the magnitude of E. That's one leg of a right triangle being less than the hypotenuse. Geometrically, we've now got it be, be, to be obvious. Okay, So given this formula, it's just obvious. Geometrically, if we, have, we use our intuition. We don't want to have to do that, though, because we want to be able to generalize to what happens, so, for example, in Minkowski geometry. But it's still not very hard. Okay, um, Now, let's see. When is this going to be equal? It looks like again, when the, this leg is the hypotenuse, when v is actually in the direction of w. So that makes sense. Okay. So why would this be true? Well, we're just going to write down something else we found, and that's just Pythagoras, okay, which is um, the squared magnitude of p, which is the dot product of, its, of it with itself, was that's the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. Okay, And here's where we finally use the Euclidean nature of the dot product. This is exactly what's greater than or equal to 0 in Euclidean geometry. When is it equal to 0? It's only when q is 0, and that's going to be when v and p are the same vector. Okay, So that's going to give us the condition for equality. But otherwise, this is going to be less than or equal to v with v. And that's just take the square root of both sides. These are positive quantities in Euclidean geometry, and we get exactly this guy. Okay, This is the magnitude squared, that's the magnitude squared, square, square both sides, and we got it. Okay, And they're only going to be equal when the magnitude of q is 0, and that's only when q itself is 0 by the positive definiteness of the dot product. Okay, So it's just a simple consequence of Pythagoras, a very easy inequality from positive definiteness, and this master formula about the meaning of the size of the dot product and how it relates to projections. That's it.
Um, and if you see a more complicated proof of Cauchy-Schwarz, you should probably complain um, that, that this is really a, a better way to do it. Um, so that's Cauchy-Schwarz. Now, it's, it's a little unsatisfying because we have to believe that we really care about the, the, the dot product or the scalar product to, to really think this is a, a really important thing. The more you see it, the more you use it, the more you get into this um, object, the more you realize, oh my god, this is really deep. But it's, it's a little bit unsatisfying in terms of the payoff. There's a, another one, the triangle inequality, has a more direct payoff because it's more geometrically intuitive um, and easier to interpret. It's, uh, well, we'll see what, there is something that is a little disappointing about it as well. But, okay, so now I'm just going to draw the picture a little bit differently. I'm going to set it up so that V and W are going to be added together. And I've just got a triangle. Whenever I add two vectors, that makes a triangle, V and W and V plus W. Okay. And the triangle inequality, that says that the magnitude of one side of a triangle, here it's V plus W, is less than or equal to the sum of the magnitudes of the other. So here's what is a bit disappointing about this. It's like, oh, do I really have to prove this? That's ridiculously obvious. A straight line is the shortest distance between two points, these two points. Well, again, that's not actually going to be true, and it's going to be very interesting um, how it gets changed in the Minkowski geometry situation. So we want to look carefully how the algebra uh, works for this. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at this. These really have square roots in them. Um, so I'm going to square both sides of this and see what get what happens. Now I'm, gonna I'm not going to start with this and do backwards logic, but I'm going to square one side and I'm going to see what happens. So I can really square either side. I think to be more in line with the proof I'm going to give for Minkowski, I'll square this side first. Okay. So I'm going to take the magnitude of V plus the magnitude of W and I'm going to square it. And I just FOIL that out. I guess if your native language is not English, you might not call it FOILing. It's an acronym for first, outer, inner, last. But it just means use the distributive law to get the binomial, the square of the binomial. OK, and now I recognize, hey, this is exactly what um, Cauchy-Schwarz talks about. And then these guys are, are scalar products. So I'm just going to rewrite the first and the last as a scalar product of V with V and a scalar product of W with itself. And then I'm going to say, OK, Cauchy-Schwarz said this is greater than or equal to the scalar product, 2 times the scalar product of V with W. Now, I'm not putting an absolute value in here, because if the absolute value of this is less than, then if this happens to be negative, it's just that much more true, um, because this is just less than or equal to its own absolute value. And guess what this is? This is exactly what I would get. Let me just squeeze it in here. This is exactly what I'd get if I take v plus w and use bi bilinearity, the scalar product of it with itself. And that's the square of, of the, uh, the magnitude of the sum of the vectors. Okay, So what we get is if we square root both sides, we've got the square of the sum of the magnitudes is less, is greater than or equal to the uh, square of the, of the magnitude of the sum. Square root both sides and we get this. That the magnitude of a sum is less than or equal to the sum of the magnitudes. It'd be great if it were equal. That's the kind of thing we like in like a lot of algebraic cases. But it's not true. And it's just a really important thing about magnitudes. In fact, it's really, well, even when you have a lot of, uh, you throw away a lot of the other structure of this kind of thing, this is a super important thing about a norm or a magnitude or a size of a vector. This is the one thing that you always insist uh, be true about that, that, that kind of construction. OK. so. Um, we've recovered some very important uh, fundamental things about Euclidean geometry. Now in the next video, we're going to see what's the Minkowski analog. And in the video after that, finally, we're going to get some physics in here. I'm going to talk about how this all applies to the real world.